things music lovers, Rick Ferguson, rickfergusonmusic.com. Thank you for joining me. Uh, you know, in this time of necessary and important social distancing, I thought that I would offer a set of videos, each video highlighting uh, one brief composition and just share some music that, that has meaning to me, whether, whether it makes me feel engaged musically uh, or, or to be of solace or just emotional support. Um, you know, music is, and, and all of the arts are, are wonderful for that, uh, as well as connecting us to our own humanity and our shared humanity with each other. So with that in mind, in my own very modest way, I wanted to share uh, a series of, of pieces and maybe just a little conversation around these pieces that you might find to be at least uh, just a, a little bit interesting. Uh, let's start with Bach. J.S. Bach. I think Bach is always a wonderful place to start uh, when you're talking about, uh, you know, Western European music and, and other music that is derived from that tradition. Uh, so J.S. Bach, 1685-1750. Uh, this, I want to share with you this F-sharp minor prelude and fugue uh, from his first set of preludes and fugues, uh, known as the, the Well-Tempered Clavier. Um, you know, during this time period, as age of enlightenment thinking and processes began to evolve, uh, the arts were not left out of that. And so there were, during the latter part, sort of the last half of the 17th century and about the first half or so of the 18th century, there became a series of, you know, theoretical writings that came to be known as the doctrine of affections. And it really, this thinking really took off at the court of Versailles, uh, sort of around the middle or so of the 17th century. And really, to, to greatly oversimplify it, it's the idea that uh, musical sounds, when manipulated, when uh, crafted in certain ways, could elicit involuntary emotional and or psychological responses from the listener. And so, uh, of course, th this is a rather heady idea, and it was not just limited to music, but also it had, had its, uh, its, its components in visual art, uh, in literature, and of course, this thinking is by no means limited to the Baroque period. I mean, you know, let's, let's have a conversation about 19th century romanticism, shall we? Uh, but, you know, at its beginnings, one huge proponent of this uh, was a German composer, musician, uh, theoretical thinker, Johann Matheson. And in 1739, Matheson uh, published a book entitled Der Vollkommene uh, Kapellmeister, the, the Perfect uh, Chapelmeister. And in it, he went into some detail about a lot of the thinking of the day in terms of the doctrine of affections. And one of the, one of the main ideas that he worked with in a lot of his own music, and that then came to be championed by uh, Bach's second surviving son, Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, and, and the Mannheim School uh, in, in Germany a little bit later, uh, was the idea that, you know, larger interval sounds, more space, spaced out musical sounds tended to produce more of an uplifting effect. Uh, he termed it joy. Uh, whereas uh, smaller intervals had the, the opposite effect. And so uh, this was also coupled with, the I with ideas about the cho choice of musical keys, uh, the use of ornamentation, you know, all these kinds of, of elements that went into musical composition at this time. And uh, it's a really fun thing to read about and to learn about. So uh, you'll see a link to Matheson's uh, treatise here. Uh, and, and I... I certainly encourage you to go and explore that. So let us hear uh, the F-sharp minor prelude and fugue, 
uh, by J.S. Bach from his first set of, of uh, preludes and fugues from the Well-Tempered Clavier. And, you know, F-sharp minor in particular was thought to be a, a somewhat uh, somber, tragic, but also uh, oftentimes lyrically expressive key during this time period. And so the idea with the prelude and fugue was that the, the prelude would establish uh, not only the key, but it would oftentimes introduce uh, by the use of, of intervals, rhythm, tonalities that it was moving through, a, a certain state of being, preparing the listener for what was about to happen during the course of the fugue. And the fugue is, as a compositional medium, is really one of the, the older musical forms, uh, you know, going certainly back to the Renaissance. And it's the idea that we have just a tune. And this tune came to be known as the subject. And in this particular tune, uh, this is a great example of, of Bach's fugal writing because it is a four-voice fugue where ultimately we have four distinct melodic lines uh, interacting with each other simultaneously. So as a listener, I always have a lot of fun listening to Bach fugues. A, they're brilliant. But B, it is the combination of how I am listening both horizontally to, to the individual lines, but oftentimes because you have three to four, sometimes more uh, with Bach, uh, melodic lines going on simultaneously, well, of course, if I'm listening from a vertical perspective, I really am uh, hearing things harmonically as well. And so uh, it is so much fun for me to listen to this music. And I do love this particular prelude and fugue. I, I find it to be just very interesting and, and, and expressive. So I hope you enjoy it as well.
So that was the F sharp minor prelude and fugue from the first book of Bach's Well-Tempered Clavier. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be sharing other short pieces just to give us something nice to listen to, something hopefully interesting and fun to talk about, and maybe you can go and do a little exploration yourself. Listen, thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.